Welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce some concepts about deductive structure. And deductive structure is going to be the process or the system of thought that we use in the proof process. Um, this is a system of thought in which conclusions are justified by previously assumed or proved statements. Uh, so we're going to use postulates and theorems and definitions uh, to help us justify uh, step by step by step in our particular proof process. All right. There are four elements of deductive structure. Undefined terms, which we've seen already, and I'll show those to you again real quickly. Postulates, which we will accumulate as the semester goes on. We'll come up with some, we'll use some of the postulates. Definitions, there are many definitions that we will use, and theorems. So these postulates and definitions and theorems are really going to make up your toolbox of answers or reasons that you will use in the proof process. And you will have to memorize these postulates and definitions and theorems. So our undefined terms, just a quick review of those. Uh, a point, point is an undefined term. We kind of defined our undefined terms earlier on. And remember your notation uh, for indicating what's a point. Uh, lines, segments, and rays. Again, remember your notation. Uh, the differences for notating a line versus a segment for a ray and, and how those are done. Uh, if you don't recall that, you should go back and review that because um, that's some of the basic foundations of uh, this particular class. So postulates. Postulates, by definition, you want to write this in your notes, is an unproven assumption that we accept as true. For example, uh, one is the parallel postulate, which you will at some point during the semester have to memorize. You don't have to memorize it right now, but it's an example of a postulate. I bet your parents, if you ask mom or dad, the uh, parallel postulate, they still probably have committed that to memory from when they were uh, in high school. But the parallel postulate says, given a line and a point not on that line, there is exactly one line through that given point that's parallel to our original line. So that kind of thing you'll have to memorize and write out. Okay. And then there are other postulates that we use. Um, these are postulates that prove triangles congruent. We'll get to this a little bit later in the semester as well. Side, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, and side, side, side. This is kind of an abbreviation for those three different uh, types of postulates, but these postulates prove triangles congruent. And we use proving triangles congruent as the tool to help us formulate our thinking process and our thought process um, and for you know, executing and learning deductive structure. We use definitions. The third element of deductive structure is definitions. And definitions state the meaning of a term or an idea. And definitions are always reversible. Okay, we call this the converse. You, when you reverse something, uh, that is the converse. Okay, and that's going to be important that you learn that vocabulary. So, uh, for example, here's a definition that you will need to write down. You want to memorize this one. This definition. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. I'm going to ask you to memorize this. This is one of the tools that uh, you will use uh, in the proof process. Okay, So you've been given the definition of a midpoint here. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. So if we want to reverse this, and it's going to be true, what is the reverse or the converse of this definition? Well, the converse is if a point 
divides the segment into two congruent segments, then it is a midpoint. Okay, so that's the reverse or the converse of our definition because we didn't say, we didn't start with if we have a midpoint, we started if we have two congruent segments. So if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then we know it's a midpoint. So it kind of depends on what's given, you know, so order is important here, but that is uh, the converse. So now we have two different reasons that we would use in proof or in our deductive structure. We have our regular definition and we have the converse of that. Um, and so they both would be used in different situations depending on what you're given and what you're trying to prove. If you're trying to prove a midpoint, you would use the converse. If you're given a midpoint, well, then you would use the regular definition. The final item in deductive structure are theorems. And theorems are mathematical statements that have already been proven. Now theorems, unlike definitions, are not always reversible. Okay, so here's an example of a theorem that you will have to commit to memory. You'll use this in the proof process. Write this in your notes. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Well, the converse of this theorem is, write this down, I'm not going to write it on the screen, but listen carefully. Uh, if two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. Think about that. Does that make sense? Any two angles, if once they're congruent, they must be right angles? Hopefully you said no. That doesn't make any sense at all, because two angles could both be 75 degrees or 142 degrees. In fact, here's another theorem. If two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. And again, the converse of that would be if two angles are congruent, then they're straight angles. Well, not necessarily. So here's another couple of theorems that you will have to commit to memory. You will use those in the proof process. Make sure you have those written in your notes and work on memorizing those. Some pointers on deductive structure, okay? Deductor, deductive structure, we have this conditional statement. It follows the if-then format, okay? As we saw in uh, our theorems and our definitions, you know, if a point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay, we'll use that if then to help us memorize and we'll follow that process. So if you embrace that, the sooner you embrace that, uh, the easier it will be to um, adjust and get into this. So the if part, we call that the hypothesis and the then part is our conclusion, right? If two angles are right, then they are congruent. The then, that's our conclusion. So we'll use letters to help shorten this up for us. So P is the if part, and Q is the then part. So we'll use notation. We'll say P implies Q, or if P, then Q. So P implies Q. So this is implies, right? If two angles are right angles, then it implies that they must be, the angles are congruent. So we would say P implies Q. So again, work on memorizing the theorems and definitions and postulates that are presented.
Okay, don't memorize the theorem number. That's not going to help you at all. You're not going to say theorem number this or theorem number that. Okay, if then is going to be easier. It's going to be easier just to memorize the theorems than also memorize the theorems and the number associated with it. So make your life a little bit easier. And remember, use that if then pattern to assist in memorization. So that concludes this portion of the video, and we will see you in class.